tonight on the News at 10. It looks like fun and games, but that's not all that's going on here. We'll have that story. Also, rebuilding houses. The tough task has begun for many, but now the question is, what materials can you rebuild with? Richard. Yeah, John, coming on home team weather, lots of rain moving our way, which will help reduce the fire hazard across our state. How long is rain going to stick around and how much can we expect? Your forecast is coming up. And Alabama and the Hunger Games, what they have in common, might have more people flocking to the theaters this weekend. The news at 10 begins now. You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight, everyone. There is a debate going on in Tuscaloosa on what type of building materials should be allowed as people try to reconstruct their homes. Now, some city leaders want to see sturdy brick houses, while many home builders say there is a cheaper and stronger option, such as vinyl siding. WVUA's Travis Leader takes us into the debate. We had fallen to substandard housing over the years, especially in the Alberta area. And so, we, you know, I feel like we owed it to the, the people who are building back and coming back there to have uh, the, the highest quality homes that we could have. The local home builders say because of new building codes, the old designs will never pop up again in Tuscaloosa. The argument about wanting, not wanting it to look the way it used to, it will never look the way it used to because again, you're going back with new homes as opposed to homes that were 40, 50, 60 years old. The question is, will people be able to buy these homes if they have more expensive materials? to have 75% of the product in masonry, then you're adding anywhere from 10 to $15,000 per house to the cost. Some city leaders want to see homes built strong and built to last. We also, this is kind of in a way for the people who don't want to do the right thing. The ones who are coming in and wanting just to throw up as many homes as they can. And everybody in the business knows that there are people like that. Home builders are telling the city to just leave it to the experts. We don't want someone dictating to us the type of materials to be used in home building who has no experience in home building. But Tyner insists he is just trying to safeguard Tuscaloosa citizens. Before the tornado hit, their, their places were deplorable, yet they collected that rent every month. And, you know, and so I'm, I'm looking at that. I'm really, hopefully I'm protecting the people. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Travis Leader, WVUA News. The city's planning commission did not recommend applying the building material regulations. However, the Tuscaloosa City Council does have the final say in the matter. And tomorrow night, Alberta City residents will have an opportunity to voice their opinions on the rebuilding of the community. The meeting will take place at 6 p.m. at the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. And while rebuilding is the main focus to damaged areas across the state, the Alabama House has targeted looting in a new bill to make the act a crime in the state. The bill unanimously passed 102 to nothing and now goes to the Senate for debate. Representative John Merrill of Tuscaloosa was the bill's sponsor. He says it was inspired by last year's events because the act of looting victimized people after already losing their property to the storm. WVUA is continuing to cover the wildfire in Tuscaloosa County. It's been burning since Monday and it's burned a hundred acres so far. Now, fire officials tell WVA there are still some hot spots out there, and they are monitoring the situation to make sure that it does not flare up again. It started off at Camp Cherry Austin Road on Highway 216, just south of Brookwood. Last night, the fire was 100% contained. The Alabama Forestry Commission tells WVA they are hopeful it will not begin to burn again. And the windy and dry weather was part of the reason to blame for the blaze. WVA's Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott joins us now with the first look at our forecast. Hey, Richard. Hey, John. Good Wednesday night to you. Good news is a lot of rain is now on the way. In fact, starting to reach our West Alabama counties from Sumter County, points north all the way towards Winston and Marion County, starting to see a little bit of rainfall activity. The heaviest rain by far still over East Mississippi. Now, that will move in later on tonight as a slow-moving cold front moves off towards east and some severe weather happening. Early today over deep south and southeast Mississippi, that activity is fizzling out to nothing more than just some rain out there. And the forecast tomorrow for our Thursday will include a good chance of showers and storms just about any time. In fact, we're talking rain totals between one and three inches area wide, especially over West Alabama counties. Mid 70s for afternoon highs. What about the rest of that forecast? And when's the rain going to get out of here? Your forecast is coming up. Thank you, Richard, on your home team crime watch tonight, narcotics activity in Tuscaloosa County. According to the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, around 1 o'clock this afternoon, deputies responded to a tip regarding drug activity at a residence in the 1300 block of Paul Howell Road. Once there, officers discovered one pot meth lab 
and meth byproducts. 34-year-old Amber Dawn Stanford was taken into custody at the Tuscaloosa County Jail. She is charged with unlawful manufacturing of a controlled substance in the first degree and trafficking methamphetamine. Her total bond is $200,000. And now your chance to help fight crime in West Alabama. Your piece of information could be the missing link investigators need to catch a suspect. Here's this week's Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. Hello, my name is Ted Sexton, the Sheriff of Tuscaloosa County. Thanks to your help in WVUA, we have three more captures in this week's Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. Christopher Eugene was arrested on the charge of robbery in the first degree. Antoine Reed was arrested on trafficking in marijuana and other charges. And Montario May was arrested on the charge of unlawful distribution of a controlled substance. Again, thanks to your help in WVUA, three more captures in Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. That's a total of 370. Now we need your help this week in finding more of Tuscaloosa County's Most Wanted. Kanzarian Landmark Harris. He's one on charge of robbery in the first degree. He's a black male, 26 years of age, 6 foot 3, 200 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. Last known to be living on 36th Avenue East in Tuscaloosa. Quentin Gerard Campbell, one on charge of burglary in the first degree and other charges. He's a white male, 34 years of age, 5 foot 10, 195 pounds, with brown hair and green eyes. Last known to be living on Lynx Boulevard in Tuscaloosa. Melvin Cole Wilkins, wanted on violation of the Community Sex Offender Notification Act. He's a black male, 47 years of age, 6 foot 1, 220 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, and was last known to be living on 15th Avenue East in Tuscaloosa. If you have any information on these as well as others wanted by the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, please call us at 205-464-8672 or go to our website at www.tcsoal.org. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Working together, we can continue to make Tuscaloosa County a safer place to live. In Montgomery, the Alabama legislature is looking at state pension plans, in particular when public employees can receive them. A new bill would not let some new public employees draw their pensions until later in life and contribute less of their paycheck. The bill has passed committee and now heads to the full Senate. The proposal calls for setting retirement at the age of 62 for most employees and 56 for law enforcement officers and firefighters. Opponents say they're worried that the measure would make it harder to attract quality employees. And fallout continues across Alabama due to the governor's 10% budget cuts, but Tuscaloosa County may not be hit as hard as other areas. Now, as we have reported, Governor Bentley said he ordered the proration because the state's general fund budget was impacted by several factors, including the cost of tornado recovery. This is, has many state leaders trying to figure out where to make cuts from layoffs to reduce services. However, Tuscaloosa County probate judge Hardy McCollum told us he did not anticipate the proration causing a major problem with services in the county. Uh, we don't need to be in the business of trying to use our dollars to fund state uh, programs whenever we've got a pretty full agenda and pretty full plate uh, as it relates to our own needs within the county. On your home team education watch tonight, a top Tuscaloosa County school system official is accepting an offer at a different school system. Chief School Financial Officer Patrick Connor is going to Madison City School System in North Alabama to oversee finances as well as other duties. Now, Connor says he's looking forward to his new job, which he will, make, which he will start in May, but he will greatly miss his coworkers in Tuscaloosa County. WVUA spoke with Connor, who outlined what the next financial officer should focus on in a very troubled economy. Get back on financial, financially stable ground and <clears throat> Once they're back on financially stable ground, then it'll open up a lot of opportunities for them to be able to do some things that right now they can't do because they have to rebuild from the loss of the $21.6 million uh, from proration. In other education news tonight, high school students across Alabama are busy this week taking their Alabama graduation exams. And today, one school gave students a chance to get out of the classroom and relieve some of that stress while also still studying for their next exam on Friday. WVA's Courtney Highfield was there for the fun. Teachers are known for using their imagination inside the classroom, but are now using it outside the classroom for a little extra motivation. The history department decided that we would put together a little review blitz for them and kind of uh, 
the day before they take the social studies part, which is Friday, to give them a little extra practice, but do it in a fun way that would be creative and get them outside. Students have spent months studying for these exams. Ms. Jones have, um, has us studying from the first part of the semester. We go over it every single day, like for our starter just to get the questions and answers driven into our heads. And this time, they got a chance to exercise their bodies while exercising their minds. I think it's better because it's easier, it's more, you're having fun while you're learning too, instead of just sitting in a boring classroom. And the best thing is you're learning the graduation exam things and you're having fun at the same time. So I think it's a good idea. After taking graduation exams, you're pretty much toasted. So this is an easy way to actually enjoy and actually kind of get through the day since it is Wednesday and the history is Friday. Students played games like kickball, human four square, and ran relay races. And at the same time, were asked questions to help them review for their exam on Friday. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Courtney Highfield, WVUA News. And this is the first graduation exam history blitz the school has held. With each game, students received a study guide to use tonight at home. So best of luck for all the students taking the exam.